The internet, unfortunately, is full of bad advice, get rich overnight schemes and clickbaits when it comes to the stock market and investing advice. And as you know, this channel is trying to do something different. So I'm quite excited today. I want to talk about one of my favorite reports that is published on Wall Street. It's published by the Deutsche Bank every quarter, and they call it the conviction list. And in this conviction list, they put forward the best stock ideas, the best stocks to buy for the next 12 months. Now, what is great is that they hold themselves accountable and they actually track the performance uh, of the previous advice and the recommendations. So when you look over the last 12 months, the stocks containing these reports typically beat the S&P 500 and they're up 49%. Now, this quarter we have 16 new ideas and 13 updated ones. So this is 29 names, 29 stocks to invest in for the next 12 months. Let's look at them. All right, a couple more things I want to mention here before we get into the details on these stocks. And that's number one, to establish the credibility of this report. You see it on the screen here, over the last four quarters, the stocks in these reports typically outperform the S&P 500 by a decent margin. And when you look over the last 12 months, they outperform the S&P 500 by 13%. 13 percentage points, that's a decent outperformance uh, for you know stocks contained in these quarterly reports. The second thing I want to say is uh, this uh, quarter's report has 29 names. Now, we don't really have time for 29 names in today's video. We'd be here forever. So I picked five of my favorite names that speak to me that I think are kind of the leaders in their industries that I really believe will do very well over the next 12 months. And the fullest of the names is below the video. So if you have any questions with regards to some of the names I'm not going to speak about, just leave it in the comment section and we can go in the details for the investment thesis for these stocks. All right. Let's do it. The first company I want to talk about is Palo Alto Networks, ticker PANW, which is fast becoming one of the leaders in the cybersecurity business, together with CrowdStrike and a few others. But clearly, this has been dominating the headlines lately with all the ransomware attacks, and Palo Alto Networks is right in the middle of it because they have the solutions for these. Now, it's not just Deutsche Bank that's excited about this company. When you look at this page here on Bloomberg, it shows you the whole analyst community across Wall Street, all the houses that follow this company and issue these buy, sell, or hold recommendations uh, on a company. You see that 93% of these houses have a buy or overweight recommendation. And a couple of those like Barclays or Morgan Stanley have a target price of 500, 515. So that's 30, 35% upside from current levels. Now, this is a well diversified company. They 65% of their revenues uh, are coming from the US, the rest is Europe and Asia. They are in 150 countries, they have 80,000 customers, and they have two really separate businesses. Uh, one is the firewall business, the traditional firewalls that are protecting us from, from hacks, right? You and I have firewalls in our computers. This is a huge cash cow for uh, Palo Alto Networks, but they are also a very strong player in the cloud services, in the cloud solutions, and they uh, are working with all the three partners with um, uh, Microsoft, Amazon and Google Cloud Services. And this is a business that's growing at 50% plus uh, year on year. So Palo Alto Networks, one of the companies that is in, a, uh, in an industry that is growing and they're one of the more dominant players. This is exactly what you want when you're investing in stocks. You want to take an industry that's growing and you want to pick the best companies in that pack, the leaders uh, in that industry. The next company I want to talk about is Aptiv, ticker APTV which is a leader in the mobility technology industry. And when we look at the whole EV industry, the electric vehicles industry, people usually talk about Tesla and Nikola and some of the Chinese players. But Aptiv is right in the middle. It's an extremely well diversified company spread out across 124 manufacturing facilities, supplying the whole car manufacturing industry. And they focus really on two areas. One is the high voltage solutions, the solutions that help us deliver more power to these cars that are powered by electricity and, and it has to be safe so that it doesn't generate too much heat and there's uh, good isolation around it and uh, things are separated properly so that they don't overheat. These high voltage solution is a hugely growing area. Um, for Aptiv, this is a business that grew 125% last quarter versus uh, uh, last year. And the second area is the ADAS business. This is the Advanced Driver Assistance System. So thing. Uh, next generation uh, connectivity uh, and sensors solutions, uh, which is really how the autonomous vehicle industry is going to develop, right? So 
Aptiv is a company that continuously grabs market share, keeps growing, making cars more green, uh, safer, uh, more connected to each other. They also have this JV, this joint venture with Hyundai in a company called Motional in the United States. And Motional is a company that focuses on the new next generation autonomous vehicles that should be on the road in 2022. So this is a, effectively an optionality for Aptiv that at some point they will monetize Either this will grow in value or they will sell this, but this is this is a huge option that they have uh, in Motional. Now, when it comes to the valuation, the stock currently is at, at about $154. When you look at the recommendations across the street, they're somewhere between $165 to $200 per share. But I think, uh, and Deutsche Bank, the, the Deutsche Bank analyst also talks about it, uh, this is likely undervalued um, because we're in a growing industry and Aptiv has a reputation of being very conservative on their guidance. So they are likely going to surprise this year. And like I said previously, when I talked about Palo Alto Networks, this is a leader in an industry that is growing. So Aptiv is certainly a stock that should be part of your portfolio and you should focus on. The third company on the list is Capital One, ticker COF. And I want to show you again this page here from Bloomberg, which shows the whole analyst community. So it's not just Deutsche Bank, again, that's excited about this company. When you look at uh, the top left corner, you see that uh, of all the research houses that follow this company and issue recommendations, 21 of those have a buy recommendation, five have a hold recommendation, and nobody's recommending to sell this company. And when you look at uh, currently, uh, the stock is about $154, $155. The target prices uh, among all of these houses are somewhere between $170 and $200 per share. So specifically when it comes to, you know, kind of a financials recommendations right now, financials are doing pretty well because interest rates are rising. Inflation is kind of coming back and this is good for financial companies, right? With higher interest rates, all the financial companies are making money. But it, this is also a return from COVID-19 kind of a play because with more travel, with more bookings, with people moving around, they will use their credit cards more. And uh, this is obviously great for Capital One, which is a big credit card business. Now, specifically with the Capital One business, right? When you look at um, the kind of the two levers there, they are, first of all, uh, they have a huge subprime auto business. So they are lending money to a lot of people that kind of have lower FICO scores, have kind of a lower credit scores uh, and they borrow money from Capital One to buy cars. Uh, so this is a big business for Capital One. And they really haven't registered any meaningful losses from this business over the last 12 months uh, uh, against expectations uh, in a way. And the second thing is Capital One is really delivering a lot of efficiencies from their uh, kind of technology solutions and cloud migration. So they kind of used the last year to also streamline the business and, and move a lot of the stuff into the cloud and uh, achieve a lot of efficiencies uh, from just a structural point of view. So Capital One, whether it's Capital One or Visa or MasterCard, these are all great plays that I think should be part of our portfolio because rates are going, going higher. We're gonna move uh, a lot more and we're gonna be using these products a lot more. The next company I wanna talk about is Delta Airlines. And I could talk about Delta forever, but Delta Airlines, and by the way, most of the other airlines too, uh, really present a great opportunity now because the stock prices are much lower than um, you know a month ago because of the new Delta variant resurgence. And that kind of presents really a great buying opportunity. And I want to show you again the, the analyst page from uh, Bloomberg here that shows you that most of the recommendations for Delta are somewhere between the target prices are somewhere between $55 and $70 a share. And currently we're at $42. So this is a huge upside here. But let's talk about the business. Uh, there's, there's three levers that we kind of should talk about when it comes to Delta Airlines. One is a meaningful earnings growth as we ride out of the, you know, the pandemic. I remember Delta was blocking their middle seats until the month of May. So over the next few quarters, we're gonna see really a meaningful pickup in earnings because they are filling their planes to full capacity now. The second is a deleveraging cycle, and I'm gonna explain in a second, uh, but they are really beginning to deleverage the balance sheet from a huge amount of debt. And finally, the third is a huge structural kind of type of simplification in terms of uh, fleet and, and savings when it comes to the way they are transforming the fleet. Delta is one of the airlines that is really highly leveraged to corporate travel, the return of corporate travel, which is already happening, and also to long haul international travel, which will return over the next few quarters. So let's talk about the deleveraging cycle. I wanna show you this chart here that shows you the, the stock performance over the last 10 years. And you see back in 2010, all the way uh, to the left of the screen, the share was trading, uh, the stock price uh, was $10 a share. At the time, Delta had $17 billion in debt. And over the following five years, so from 2010 to 2015, 
they managed to reduce this debt from 17 billion down to 4 billion as the share price went from 10 dollars to 50. so that's 500 percent appreciation here uh, as they managed to to get this debt down and what is happening now at the last report in March, Delta reported $19 billion in debt and they already started paying down the debt and making accelerated pension payments. So again, they're on this cycle of deleveraging the balance sheet and getting in a much better financial shape. Now, when it comes to the uh, fleet simplification and this structural transformation here, that's really the silver lining of the pandemic for Delta, what they managed to do. So first of all, they managed to simplify the fleet completely and achieved a, a huge amount of um, uh, fuel efficiencies. They're somewhere between 10 and 15 percent in terms of fuel efficiency versus 2019. But they also are completely transforming the fleet. They had um, 13 fleet families in 2019. And they are reducing this down to nine fleet families by 2025. So 13 down to nine in terms of how many fleet families they are operating. And this is going to achieve $400 million in annualized cost savings. So this is a huge deal in terms of how they really transformed the whole company. And finally, when it comes to the valuation, when you look at a wider airlines index, uh, that index is up 25% so far this year, year to date in 2021. Delta is up only 12%. So Delta is really still lagging in terms of the share performance and really presents an opportunity to buy a company that um, you know, is a real quality balance sheet, one of the leaders in the industry that really seems to be doing everything better when it comes to delivering on customer service, but also managing their finances. So Delta Airlines, it's in my portfolio. It should be in yours. The last company I want to talk about today is T-Mobile, ticker TMUS. Now, T-Mobile is really one of the best growth stories in wireless and cable. Um, they, as you know, they're still digesting the Sprint merger, which is clearly uh, achieving a lot of synergies, margin improvements for them, but also there's a huge free cash flow generation story, which is really powering the company forward. They are fast gaining a leadership position in 5G. They are gaining more subscribers than their competitors, in particular in areas where they don't have a dominant position, like non-metro areas where they don't have such a big penetration or the large enterprise segment uh, where you know the Sprint uh, merger is really helping them gain kind of new traction in these areas. They also announced a huge share buyback program uh, from 2023 to 2025. They announced that they would be buying $60 billion worth of shares, which at current valuation is one third of the whole market capitalization. So think about it, they're going to be buying one third back in terms of buybacks. And to the extent that they're ahead of the plan uh, on their business uh, delivery, uh, it's likely that they would start this sooner. So I realize this is still two, two and a half years uh, from here, but to the extent that they would be starting sooner, the market will start anticipating this. So there's going to be a huge tailwind to the stock price. So T-Mobile, again, just like I said in the first um, section of this video, when I talked about Palo Alto Networks, you're picking a company in a growing industry with 5G and, and uh, you know the new uh, generations that are uh, coming. You're picking a, a, an industry that is growing and you're really focusing on the leadership uh, company in that industry. And T-Mobile is certainly that. Uh, currently, uh, we're at $145, $148 per share. And when you look at the valuation and the target prices, most houses on the street are somewhere between $170, $200. I've seen one house even having a target price of $250 a share. So T-Mobile certainly should be part of your portfolio if you want to be exposed to, uh, to this industry. All right, so much for five fantastic stocks, stories to own in the second half of this year. Don't forget to look at all the other names below the video. There's 29 names contained in this report. If you have any questions with regards to any of those that I haven't talked about, uh, leave me a comment uh, in the comment section and I'll get back to you with the investment thesis behind there. But um, do your research, be smart about how you invest your money in the, for the rest of the year. Thanks for hanging out. Make sure you give a like to this video if you enjoyed this conversation. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And I'll see you in a few days.